Readers, we are back. Episode 50. Absolute smack and banger for you today, I'll tell you that. All right? We're not gone. Cash Daddies is an ending, okay? We, we got stuff happening, okay? We got shows, travel, all that, all right? You have to be patient, okay? We took a week off. It's all right. Cash Daddies are back. Episode 50. Let's get the announcements out of the way because it's been a minute. The first thing, all right? If you're listening to the show and you have not given a review yet on Apple Podcasts, whatever, leave a review. Give us five stars, okay? Talk about Neff's cats, Howie's hair, Sam's conspiracies, whatever you want to say about me. I don't care. Leave us five stars. That's all you got to do. Next thing, if you're watching it on the YouTube, if you prefer to watch us and our ugly faces, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, boost the algorithm, okay? You want more readers? You want more engagement, interaction, do all that stuff. Third thing, all right, you want merch, cashdaddiestshirts.com. Get all your merch there. Last one we had, the Cash Daddies astronauts, you know, the spacemen from crypto, flew off the shelves, flew off the in, invisible imaginary internet shelves. Okay, Pete, you guys love that. We're going to work on some more shirts. Again, I'm trying to get on all the guys, get some hats going. Uh, whatever you want, let us know. If you have a design, drop it to us. Give us in the Discord, the Instagram, Twitter, and we'll steal it. <laughs> we'll give you credit, but we'll steal it. So, cashdaddiestshirts.com if you want a t-shirt, hoodie, whatever. We're working on uh, new colors, new sizes, all that stuff. And if you want to join the community, it's as easy as hitting the links in the description below. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, Discord. All that stuff, everything, link in bio. That's where you're gonna click, link in bio, or there might be uh, individual links you can click it for a specific one. Click it, all right? That's all you gotta do. And now we're gonna get to Sam's dates. If you wanna see Sam perform live, who wouldn't wanna do that? Tinfoil Hat Comedy, Swarm Tank, you got Eddie Bravo, Sam, XG, all those guys, all the Tinfoil Hat guys. They're gonna be there July 30th, 8 p.m., 9.30 p.m., Dallas, Texas, Hyenas Comedy Nightclub. Dallas. You gotta be there, all right? Then we got July 31st, 4 p.m. in Oklahoma City, Bricktown Comedy Club. If you want tickets, samtriplee.com. That's all you gotta do. Go to the site, buy the tickets, boom, you're done. Show up. Easy as that. Again, you guys haven't seen us in a while. Episode 50. It's a banger. Banger city. This thing's gonna be rolling, rocking. I'm recording this before, so I don't know what happens, but I know it's gonna be a banger. We're gonna keep the energy up. Keep it high. Good vibes. Let's get it going. Roll the clip. <laughs> now, see, you're going to pull out politics and not physical beauty. Physically, she is attractive to me. Listen, dude. It's yeah, like, so it's like when here. people say Chris Nat, when people say Chris D'Elia or Brett Ernst are good looking guy. I'm like for comedians. Right. But they're not model. Good looking. Do I mean, when we're talking good looking brother, you want I'm me to pull my hair down? Is that what you're asking? I'm talking about, I could pull a thousand bitches on Instagram. You've never heard of that would blow that chick. I would stab just to smell their farts. Okay. That's how hot they are. All right. Cash purposes only. You'd be an idiot to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. All right, and welcome to Cash Daddies. We're banking fatties. We're getting back to basics here. Joining me are the ass to ass brothers. Sometimes they love each other. Sometimes they don't. Chris Neff and Howie Dewey. What up? And finally... The gnome is to love him from the No Mercy podcast. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the not other no, people. No, 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 hold no, on, no, hold no. on. Let's address Traitory. Traitory. Let's, ad let's address the elephant in the room with Coke Dealer E. What is going on? Do you like win another crypto lottery? I see a new watch on you. I see shades. Whoa, blinging. It's, it's fire. It's fire, but it's not It's not another crypto lottery, all right? New shades, new watch from MVMT, okay? 
in a tiny in a tiny apartment in Southern California, two college dropouts teamed up to create a watch company that broke all the rules. With fair prices, unexpected colors, and clean original designs, MVMT, pronounced movement, grew into one of the fastest growing watch brands, shipping to over 160 companies across the globe. Now, MVMT has expanded into blue light glasses that protect your eyes from screens, minimalist jewelry, and more styles, essentials that don't break the bank. All designed out of their California headquarters. <laughs> Bet you're pulling chicks with those new shades and that new Oh my watch, God, huh? dude. So many, so many, all right? Now, on July 20th, MVMT is celebrating their eight-year anniversary by running a huge site-wide sale. Huge, every, so huge, it's so huge. Every single thing. Guess so how, huge. Guess, guess what the percentage is, it's not 20. It's 28%. Wow. 20% off, huge. After 28. 28. 28%, off 28 of every, off of everything. Off. All their best-selling watches, blue light glasses, jewelry, more, all that stuff. So see, these glasses right here, these are the icons. What Look about those, that watch, dude. bro? This that watch? looks like the watch Tom Cruise rocks in Top Gun. What's that Look called? Look at that, I, it looks, dude. I, I pretty much got it from Tom Cruise. All right, this That's is called- That's amazing, bro. The, that lets the, the ladies know gold. you mean business. I mean business. It's the champion gold. This is the top of the top. You Does can't it have like a better. chronometer? So like when you're working out and somebody interrupts you at the gym to talk about your abs, you can just hit it and say, hold on, I got to get my lap time here. Yeah, <laughs> it does actually. I swear to God, look at this thing. <laughs> this thing is mint. This thing is mint. That's Dude, awesome. you are such a baller. You I are am such biggest. a baller. All right, so. That's serious shit. How do this. we get them? How do yeah, you get what's them? the offer here? What are they doing? 28% off mvmt.com forward slash cash. All right. That's 20%, 28% off. Not 20%. That's a whole tax bracket. That's a whole tax bracket. All right. So celebrate eight years of MVMT with 28% off site wide. Don't miss MVMT's biggest sale of the year. Go to MVMT.com slash cash. Enjoy 20% off. 28% off. That's 28% off site wide. MVMT.com slash cash. Join. Thank you, movement. We love Join you. And we appreciate you sponsoring this podcast wow a lot of stuff going on a lot of stuff first of all the entire cash daddy's reader community wants to give a heartfelt love to chris neff he lost a close person in his life and uh we uh we feel for you brother i appreciate that and uh, i want to extend my thanks as well i have had so many dms uh, I didn't get a chance to respond to them. Um, I, I, I appreciate everybody that's reached out, especially uh, Ballpoint Goonie Matt. Uh, it means a lot, man. Um, you know, my cats are my kids. Uh, and I'm sure his dog owners can relate as well. And, you know, you lose a family member unexpectedly. It's a fucking crusher. But uh, we, will, we will go on and we will survive. And we will remember Millie for the beautiful, loving soul she was. And... Um, uh, yeah, thanks. It means a lot, guys. And uh, it's good to be back because I know we had scheduling issues. And um, yeah, let's uh, let's we don't need to. We get had back to work basic. around Evan's other shows. Well, yeah, Evan's a celebrity now. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. That's, I'm not even on No Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> not even any any was not associated to it. Hey, like, real quick. Yeah, what, whatever, well, little Trump. Before we get into this, <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> You guys know me. I don't like getting too, uh, uh, is it red pilled when you're on the foil? Is it the blue? It's red. It's red. I think I might be on a little red pill Kool-Aid because I have a celebrity crush in uh, Biden's uh, press secretary, Jen Psaki. And I saw a video Dude, today. Oh, quiet, quiet. You can actually yeah. hear me throw up in my mouth. Go on. Okay. Well, I got <laughs> I mean. I you know it's Mark Zuckerberg in drag, basically, right? Okay, I got a thing for sassy redheads, so slow yeah, your roll. With dicks. anyway, uh, Evan, if you don't mind, pull my Twitter up. Um, I saw this video and I was like, "This is the ultimate uh, redhead boner killer." When I see Jen Psaki as possibly a lizard person, have you seen this video? It yes, I've out. seen this video. So, is she a lizard person? Yes. So is this like V? Can I have sex with her? And it's still going to... Watch this, guys. What? Yeah, dude. She's... I, I, dude. 
Yeah. That's kind of hot. I thought I made a ruling in here. Neff's weird stuff at the end of the podcast. <laughs> Not early. But we're finding who's giving him boners, dude. Neff okay. well, comes right that, out of the shoot. Right out of the shoot. And with yeah, I mean, like, dude, party. I made an executive order, dude. <laughs> well, hey, and I agree with you. So we'll get right into your word shit because yeah. there's confirmation that this whole ruse that I might be transitioning. No, is you are. A, is a you, I might be joining you. That's the, <laughs> right. that's it. Okay. Because but you, you are. Because you are the one that has been transitioning this I whole time. I am not the one. I am, one, I am some dude that you don't even know. Go on. I don't want to ruin your fun time because I know no, you've been. Evan, yeah. roll the. Okay, hold on. Exhibit A. Okay? Exhibit A. Okay, Exhibit this is a. what I call ski ball shoulders. If you've ever played ski ball, ski ball or <laughs> I mean, look at this. And I'm the one that people are worried about. Can we go to the next slide, please? Evan and wakes up not? in the morning. He does a lot of shrugs. Yeah. Look at this. So you think all my hot redhead friends. And by the way, he just said he loves redheads. Yeah. Every red. This is a look at this. That's Photoshop. Think, that's not even real, man. You think that's Tara Patrick is a trans. I never said Tara Patrick is a trans. The issue That's is what he's saying. No, no. What he's saying is you're no. a trans based no, on that's not, that's the fact not what I said that you that. look like Hitler fucked a three-toed sloth and have fucking shoulders that you can. Can I ask you yeah. something, Neff? I just want to go through your writing process. Right. Uh, how many different references did you go through before Zero. you took that? So that's, Zero. Yeah, 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 yeah. I immediately saw okay, that picture. Guess what? It, it took it him showed. all day to come up with that. Yeah, it, it did. I it saw did. that picture and I said, it's old ski ball shoulders, Tripoli. That came it's to a, me instantly because <laughs> it, it's not normal, dude. Can you go to the, did you find the first one where he says, I have women's hips? No, I have childbearing <laughs> hips. Your shoulders look like an upside down you. Look what, at him What again. do you want, dude? Normal. What do you want? What do you want? I want him to be like this, normal, as a boy. No, but you don't get Neff, you don't get it. That's because Sam, he's doing like uh sets of eight with 315 of shoulder shrugs every yeah, single morning. Yeah, there we go. Look at this. Apparently, I have women's hips. Look at this. Narrow shoulders, wide hips, and then Q angle. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, and I don't I got even know what that means. Spice rack, as long as we're gonna take care of your entire body. You know, look at that. That's a lady's body. You, you're uh, saying I look like that's Rachel Maddow's body. Is that what you're telling me? No, they're saying you look like a transitioning Rachel Maddow because you're not there yet. Yeah, but they're saying I'm a lesbian. No, no, they're saying you're a tranny in transition. No, no they're saying dude. I'm a woman transitioning to a man. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. Yeah, that's why that. your whole premise is just as bad as your punchline right there, okay? I mean, we're oh, never going to get this time back. Uh, hey, punchline or improv? There is a huge difference. No, hey, no, you had oh, a punchline. No. It's the same bad thing. It is. Howie, right. are you hungover? Is that why you're quiet right now? No, I'm just, uh, I feel like I just bond, got uh, bombasted with uh, different types of shit from all directions for the first five minutes of this pod tonight. That's all. So just so you guys know, we'll check in with Howie real quick. Howie uh, spent Friday night threatening 25 year old jujitsu people. Oh yeah. Like Howie's the old guy at the party that says he could fight everybody. Right. <laughs> Hold on, time out. It looks like you have two black eyes. Did you get in a fight or have you been swimming and wearing your goggles too long? No, it's called being 55. Yeah, it's air conditioning, 55. Yeah. I got another few years. Wow. No, man, I got, we were watching MMA and I literally like, yeah, I almost took on 20 kids. Now, can you get back to this? Because you called me and said there's a massive conspiracy in MMA that I wasn't aware of. Would you like to share? Can we call no. this? Can no. we call this episode the Retard Hour? Can we? Do I that? think so. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, Listen to this. It's so. Okay, go on, Howie. No, these kids basically said. The, 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 there's a guy that lost a fight, and he he basically beat the Still shit out. Shot of fight. No, no, no. That was before that. Um, I'll, I'll tell you which one was. But this guy basically won the fight. Yeah. He beat this guy up. No ifs, ands, or buts. Um, and they gave the other guy the decision. Yeah. Uh, name of the guy was uh, Phillips. Phillips. Phillips beat this guy, Pavia, 
beat his ass. Beat uh, his ass. And they gave Pavia the decision. Now Phillips fights, or this Pavia fights in the corner of uh, what the hell's his name? Ex MMA fighter. He's the main. It's it's his team. Um, no man, it's a dude. Uh, little Ryan guy. Faber. Yes, oh, Faber. Faber. So all these kids are like, yeah, man, it doesn't matter because if if it's Faber's fighter, he's gonna win. And then and then the the theory got crazy because <laughs> they basically said, yeah, uh, he wins because it's uh, he's tight with Joe Rogan, who knows who's gonna win most of these fights, and he gives the uh, the uh, whatever you want to call it, not advice, but uh, tips. He gives the tips to these executives from Spotify in the Lower East Side of New York. Like, this this was the most bizarre thing I had ever heard. But how he bought into it totally, by yeah, the way. Because he's he backtracking right now. <laughs> he's completely real. backtracked. I'm like, last night, he's like, dude, it's all there. They see it. He's like, he's like, yeah, well, dude, it's I happening. Said, I said, it's, it, it's like a bunch of pieces of puzzle that come together pretty good with this conspiracy. I mean... Well, Howie, none of it comes together pretty good. There's no pieces <laughs> that come together on this. There's just a bunch of your Italian cousins and they are and by the way, jujitsu telling you about stuff yes. that, that they just try to it's just like dude, you so what you're saying is that you think Joe Rogan, who is worth hundreds of millions of dollars, is going to do inside trading and rig fights for for how much money I mean, can you make a note of this because we might need to erase all this so we don't lose everybody here no listen i don't believe any of this i think it's the most bizarre thing i've ever heard i was arguing with these kids and i told sam they're all like purple pink green brown belts in jujitsu um, and the one thing they all have in common is they all their favorite podcast is Tinfoil Hat, which well, is probably you know, why they, a broken they, clock's right twice a day, I guess. Yeah, there you go. That's what it is. So no, it was a really bizarre uh theory. Put it that way. It was a bizarre yeah. theory. Um yeah. but it was hilarious. It, it was hilarious, and I mean it's 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 probably not true, but it's it's, it's probably. It's, no. I don't know. I don't know, man. Probably. Let's read you got a tweets. lot of gambling. You got a lot of underworld gambling syndicates out there, and if they get information on a fight like this, they can place it on a hundred different betting sites and literally end up betting millions. So of dollars so on- so if you're looking at Joe Rogan, right? We're talking maybe two hundred million dollars off a deal, right? Conservative. Yeah. People put the number at almost like 20 to 50 million makes up advertising on his podcast. Then they say he makes around 20 mil doing the UFC every year. So we're looking at almost $300 million, right? Yeah. Before tax. How much are they going to pay this guy to completely shish kebab his career if he got caught? I don't know. I mean, a lot of those guys got me a number, caught. dude. You had to, when you heard this, a number had to flash into your head as to what it's the a big number. Money Joe Rogan would be making. It's a big number, but what if on one of these cheesy little fights, what if on a cheesy little fight like this, he can pull off 30 or 40? No, but it minutes. doesn't matter how big Hold the on, fight so is. So who's Joe filtering the information to the mob? Um, that was one of the theories. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what Howie's tweet says. It says, it's official. The betting underground has infiltrated the UFC. Hashtag mob, hashtag fix, hashtag money sign. I don't care. <laughs> that, that that fight was fixed. That was a big fight. <laughs> no, a- I'm not against that. There is corruption in the fight game, dog. Oh, that, that, that fight was definitely no F ands or buts. Everybody was talking about it after. It was this guy beat the shit out of him for three rounds and lost. So something smells. I mean, that's like, look, you guys see it in boxing all the time. Right. It's, Nobody's it's saying, well, I mean, there could be some up, but you're saying that uh, the the John Madden of this sport is involved. I didn't say that. You this did was, say that. No, you that totally didn't come didn't from me. That. It didn't come from me. It came I'm from your cousin not, who do jujitsu. I'm not smart enough to come up with with that genius 
conspiracy theory that would take me a year to come up with but when they were telling me this you know what they're saying well uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure one man's genius hello is another jen man's saki retarded there you go. okay jen thank saki you for, for jumping me. on my line i had a line there i was working on and you jumped it do it again jumped it okay it again. no it the, we missed it we have Guys. the technology so speaking of conspiracy, Chris Naff wants to come here and shit all over my crypto dreams. Yep. So bring it up, Chris. I Line will, it man. up. I will. I've, I've been doing a lot of research on Tether. And I guess what we need to, to establish around here is what is everybody's current knowledge of what a stable coin is? By, or, or if you guys were to raise your hands and I said, can you name me three stable coins? Could you do that? I, I don't even like that term. It's a stupid term. There's no yeah, such right. thing as a stable. There's, there's okay. no stable stocks. Why is there a stable okay. coin? Well, hold on. Evan, would you be able to name three stable coins? Yeah. Okay, okay. Sam. So I can name two okay. for sure. Let's hear them. I would go, I would go Bitcoin. I would go Ethereum. And then you could get, I, I mean, I like, uh, uh, Monero. Monero. Uh, Evan, do you want to go ahead and answer the question and say if any of those three are, are, are stable coins? Uh, not, they're not stable coins. But okay, USDT. Yeah. There you go. That's, that's a winner. That's tether. Yeah. Uh, First of all, explain in your sm small mind, feeble mind, what a fucking stable coin is. Hold yeah. on. Hold on. Who, who are you talking to? Howard? We're talking. <sighs> what is a stable coin? Because this, I, this, we're 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 wasting air here right now. What, we are not this wasting air. Yes, we this are. Is what yes, we are we learning. Are. We are learning. <clears throat> go ahead, Evan. Stable coin is basically a coin that stays at a dollar, no matter Correct. what. Correct. Within like two cents. Correct. Now, now tether. Why is that a stable coin? Okay, because they're the function of stable coins is for people to put their money in to purchase other coins like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, uh, or or if they're going to make a transaction and they can't use a bank that will allow them to, they first buy Tether and then they buy Bitcoin or they buy Ethereum. So the reason we need to have a discussion about stable coins is they're an important part of the ecosystem, which is the crypto marketplace. Yeah. And well, yeah, I mean, uh, Evan, what's Tether right now? Is it like six largest market cap, I believe, somewhere around there? Yeah. It's trading for a dollar, man. Okay, but how you, it's not about what it's trading for. It's about what it represents in the community. And the problem is we have uh, Tether, which has been audited by the New York State uh, Attorney General and is no longer allowed to function as an entity in the state of New York because... Tether was originally created as a place where you can trade your dollar in for a dollar of Tether and vice versa. It trades one to one. Now, the problem is when they did their audit, they only showed that they had 3.9% of actual cash on hand. So what the problem is, there's a lot of people saying Tether could be the largest Ponzi scheme since Bernie Madoff because if they're not holding equity for dollar per dollar transactions, where is that fucking money? And over the weekend, um, excuse me, not the weekend, about three days ago, we had um, their, here, let me back up. Their CEO and CFO is nowhere to be found. They will not do any press. So CNBC managed to get a, an interview with their, um, uh, their tech officer and their lawyer because there's so many people concerned about what, is Tether really about? Where is their money? Are they holding paper money? Are they holding uh, anything in, in, in of value? And they've also uh, had people claim that they're holding Chinese paper money and they will not confirm or deny this. Evan, can you pull that clip I sent you? Now, keep in mind- I tried to watch it, it was ridiculous. Right, but what they're saying is we don't need to prove you anything because the market's already said that Tether is a safe, stable coin. And then if you don't mind, just go ahead and press play a little E. Okay. And Stuart, you know, part of the crypto community, a key part of that is transparency. Um, and I'm, I'm, I have to say, I'm a little disappointed we didn't get any answers to one of the biggest questions that are out there. And that is just the makeup of the commercial paper. I'll ask you one more time. Is there any more information, whether that be what kind of international commercial paper? Is there any Chinese commercial paper? And... Are you willing to give us any of that? I guess that that was sort of my biggest question, a lot of folks' biggest question coming to this. And how do you feel if we don't answer that in terms of 
trust going forward, as we talked about volume, does not necessarily equal trust. And you do have competitors that are issuing more coins and perhaps seeing more volume than Tether, just because you guys have led the way and grown to a $62 billion market cap doesn't mean it'll always be that way, right? Well, that's true. Uh, things may change as they move forward, but we have been leaders in transparency. We were the first to disclose anything about our reserves. Um, so we're happy to see others following in our footsteps. And we will look for more ways to be transparent and more ways to push information out to our users, to our stakeholders, to the public uh, as we go forward. But as Paolo mentioned, uh, I think Tether deserves a lot of credit for uh, bringing this market forward, for pushing the market to be more transparent, for pushing the market to do innovative things. And that's the key to, to Tether's success. We're laser focused on our customers. We are laser focused on innovation. And Tether fundamentally is more popular because it's transparent, it's trusted. You can go ahead and cut it. The point is this, he doesn't answer the question. He didn't answer any of her questions. What is, the, what is this Tether backed by? Okay, so there's a fundamental problem in like, if we want to take Madoff as a case, if there's a run on accounts, okay, and people want their goddamn money, and they can't supply it, it is possible there could be a direct correlation to another crash with Bitcoin, Ethereum, all of the big coins. So that's my concern after researching Tether and realizing that they won't put out an audit, okay, they're saying that they'll put out astatations, which aren't full audits but nobody will will provide right. an audit where their fucking money is so the this company is a very the, dangerous situation when you're talking about a company that's worth the company's a billion. fraud the company's yeah. a fraud correct but here's the All problem right. it's I, value I it, it's market cap is 60 billion dollars that's a tenth of bitcoin so if people are going to run well, and pull here's their bitcoin, okay okay by the way bitcoin's okay. up 12 percent today Here, here's what i'm gonna tell you guys okay here's what i'm gonna tell you Anything that you talk about digital currency can be applied to our monetary unit and system that we use in the United States, Federal Reserve, Fractional Reserve Banking, a lot of this stuff that's gone on with, with uh, stocks. I mean, we have seen stocks just disappear overnight. It's, it's the way it is. Is it possible that this company is full of shit? 100%. Are you dancing the dance by doing this? One hundred percent. Tomorrow could they could they could collapse, and ten percent Bitcoin is gone. That's ten percent. But you know what, man? It is a my humble opinion, and maybe because I got skin in the game, I'm thinking of this. I think digital currency is bigger than one company. Of course. And I think Absolutely. just like the internet, yes. okay, started out with a couple fucking companies that DARPA started, right? That DARPA started, it grew and it got out, out of hand, man. It got out of their control and they're trying to control it now. And I think they're going to struggle with that. Can I, so, yes. bring in a, can I bring a little bit more color into Tether and its function in the crypto ecosystem? That's my concern here. The problem is this. If people lose uh, trust in Tether, there are mainly two competitors, in my opinion. There's USDC, which is Coinbase's stablecoin. There is what, BUSD, Evan? Um, and the problem is, if this were to fall, meaning if Bitcoin was to keep going down, and people want to pull their money out of Bitcoin and put it to Tether, and then take their money from Tether into their bank accounts, and Tether can't clear this because they don't have liquidity, this could be a, uh, a fulcrum which collapses I understand to what a you're large saying. degree and very fast. I understand fast. what you're saying. Yes, and Madoff, this is a big concern, 100%. Yeah, and, but the Madoff is a great example because at the time, Madoff was representing $62 billion in assets. And after the financial collapse and people got squirrely and took their money out, he couldn't, he couldn't pay people back and it was exposed as a Ponzi scheme. So the, 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 the relative numbers are pretty close in that Tether is valued at $60 billion. But if there's no money to back all that up and there's a run, this could affect and have reverberations throughout the entire crypto sphere. And I want people to be aware of it so they know when they're buying and You're selling right. crypto that they that I, I wouldn't leave your money in Tether. I wouldn't keep it there. It's super sketchy for them. So you're saying pull your audit. money out Bitcoin right now? No, no. What I'm saying is do not leave any mother, money in Tether. There are other options. You could put it in uh, UCSD, USDC. You could put it in uh, 
Uh, if I own uh, Bitcoin, Binance's what do you think I should do? I, I, I wouldn't put it in Binance is going, the SEC is, is going after Binance. Correct. Like, and, I, and here's the thing we need to roll, roll back on. This isn't just me bringing up some wild idea. Yellen is, is talking specifically about uh, auditing Tether and BUSD. Uh, the only one I believe is safe, in my opinion, is Coinbase. Um, they were created is. by Circle. And again, that may, that leads me to be somewhat Circle K, the gas station? No, we used to call it Circle F when I grew up, though, Dude, by the way. Oh, life. God! <laughs> yeah. We just lost those gay dollars, man. Yeah. What are you doing after school? Going to Circle F and playing pinball. Now That's he's got beat two of them. God the point is, dang it, dude. The point is this. Uh, USDC, which is Coinbase's stable coin, it was created by Center Consortium. They are in business with Coinbase. They have been transparent with their audits. Then you have these two assholes who, uh, what's her name from CNBC, was got an interview with, and he's got flop sweat on his forehead. If you watch, I care. I, I, I would wish every one of our readers would watch this interview because it was extremely compelling. They didn't answer any questions, and they're saying everything's fine. We've got people in the Caymans that are going to do audits for us. You know who those people are? A fucking financial institution with five people, okay? That screams to me that this is paid off, that they don't have the money, it's do you guys remember what happened uh, to full tilt poker when the UIGA passed Bush passed the UIGA and nobody could gamble? Well, no. they didn't have the funds and all those players got screwed and the DOJ shut them down. So I won't be surprised if Yellen and the SEC and even the DOJ gets in deep on this and says, Tether, where is your fucking money? Because if we lose faith in this system, which we, we can't even fucking tax right now effectively anyway, which we can't control then we're now we're concerned about our American consumers. Oh yeah, the point this is, is how they're gonna try to. The point they, is, I will not put money in Tether for any reason. So if dude, I don't know a human account, being that's ever put a penny in Tether. Howie, I've never fucking heard of Tether until today. How I have to agree with Howie on that. I mean, seriously, what the, we're, we're spending a little too well, much well, emphasis hey, on God. fucking Tether. Okay, okay, I disagree. I don't think you understand how the, the space works when people buy and sell Bitcoin. They, okay, so obviously I'm not familiar with this thing. So what you're saying is if I sell my Bitcoin, I have to go through one of these stable coins. It depends where you're at. A lot well, of people I mean, do. I do mine through Coinbase. Yeah, Everything then you're fine. Coinbase. Then you're fine. Then you're 90% of America goes through Coinbase. That is not true. I think it is. No I don't know anyone that doesn't trade off of Coinbase. Guys, guys. guys. Tether is a huge part of uh, buying and selling any coin on in the world. Okay, they have a sixty billion dollar valuation market cap. That's fifth. Okay, they're, they're I know, but I don't know anyone that doesn't use Coinbase. That's okay. my point. Okay, my point is, I agree with Howie. Binance. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't if, you're know Binance, if you're on Binance, you transfer money in to a stable coin before you buy it. And if the money's sitting in a stable coin and it hasn't been purchased, it changed into Bitcoin, yes, you are at risk. And I think you I think you're big buyers of of things like Bitcoin, Ethereum. I think basically they just move money right from their bank to Coinbase. I mean, everyone I know, that's what they do. Right, but people that can't use banks are a lot of people they have to buy a, a stable coin and then convert that money into uh, a coin. So you can't use a bank, you're screwed. Uh, there's tons of people that can't use banks. That's why Tether exists. That's crazy. Okay, but I, 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 whatever. We don't That's need to bizarre. stay on it too long, but you guys need to be I aware see, that- I see what you're saying. That, it's a, that it's stable a point. coins are an integral part to uh, of how crypto functions as a whole. But it, it's, I agree with you. It sounds shady. It sounds real shady. It's shady as shit. But yeah. what I'm worried about is we're presenting it as, and I've heard about Tether forever, and everyone has said, watch out for Tether. Watch out for Tether. From the people I've talked to, the crypto cowboys. So in that sense, Neff isn't off. He's really right about what he's talking about. Well, I agree. Okay. The, but the what's being presented is that Tether is Bitcoin. No, that's not what's being presented. I don't want anybody to think that. Well, what that's I'm what I'm, is, I'm sensing from you. No, what I'm saying is this. Tether has a function within the crypto community. It is, it is, it is basically a dollar-for-dollar dollar exchange where you can park your money. If you're buying and selling on a day-to-day -day basis, you're parking your money in a stable coin, okay? If you're day trading this shit, 
You're not taking it out and putting it back in. You're putting it in a, in a way station before you make your next trade in and out. And there are tons of traders that use Tether, that use uh, other stable coins as a place to park their money in between trades. Okay. And what I'm saying is, okay. what I'm saying is, if you're doing that, you need to be aware that there is a inherent risk to keeping your money in stable coins, especially Tether. That's all I'm saying. But you do need to be aware if Tether were to crash, it would it would take down 10 to 15 percent of Bitcoin immediately. Oh, That's a conservative right. estimate in my mind. So uh, here's 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 is, what I here's what I think is a bigger threat. I mean, we've to, lost 50 percent of the market, right? I mean, well, it's back up. I mean, it's back. Up. We've had a Bitcoin's had a hell of a bounce the last couple. So of days. this got sent to me by our good friend Robin. And this is from uh, I really love. So a lot of people are like, where you get your news from? Where you get your news from? Uh, I really like. Oh, um, oh, they got rid of it. Basically, somebody said that Bitcoin 40K is short, is getting shorted along the lines of that. When it hits 40. Yeah. Well, that might be tonight. That might be at midnight. I mean, it's at 38 and change right now. Let's before I forget. This is what I think is the biggest threat to crypto right now. And I've been reading up on it this weekend. I felt this way for a long time. The fact that China is creating their own cryptocurrency market. They're, they're creating their own digital one right now. Uh, and, and if they complete this whole entire system of creating, creating their own crypto, they're going to be able to infiltrate just about every market on the globe right now. And the one thing it's going to do is it's going to crush the U.S. dollar. That's that's something I've been reading all weekend. I mean, that's the, the, I think the Chinese threat of coming up with their own cryptocurrency market. That's because I mean, look how many people you have over there. They've already given they've already given a million Chinese people um, uh, this new digital one. So they're already trying it out. Um, believe it or not, we're doing the same thing. I mean, our government is coming up and, and trying to create a digital currency uh, along with using the dollar. So, of course, of course so they can control it. But Absolutely. we need to go back because we haven't been all in the same um, sphere in a while and address the big picture. Why did crypto drop? Is it because China ban is, is, is putting the bans on mining? Uh, I personally think it's more China than anything. Um, I don't know when the bottom is, but I don't think the bottom is is close. I think it goes a lot lower. Um, and people keep asking me, would you buy this dip right now? And my answer is absolutely not. Um, I think it's going to go a lot lower. And when Ooh. I say a lot lower, I think that support level, if it if it goes under 25, 26, I think the fucking uh, the the floor is somewhere around 12 to 15K. That's me personally. I pray. Could be. Could be. I you pray. know what? I'll tell you, but here's another thing too. We, I'll we, buy it at 15. I'll buy fat chunks. This whole Chinese thing, uh, you know, I don't love Kramer, but he came out Friday and they were talked about Chinese companies that are doing business in the United States that are trading on the NASDAQ New York Stock Exchange. He said, you can't buy them. You cannot buy any of these Chinese companies because, and, because. Real quick, let me interrupt. The hold irony on, let him is, finish his... But hold on. The irony is this dumb fuck literally says to buy Didi last uh, two weeks ago at, a, might... at IPO and then it crashes 40%. Yes. Yeah. Well, well I don't why. know the reference enough because I have to hear what he's saying. Yeah. Bobby. Well, that's, that's part of the reason. He's basically these Chinese companies that are traded on the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, uh, they, they, every single time that they spike a little bit, they take a beating because the Chinese government sanctions the shit out of them. Uh, and basically his point was, you cannot invest a penny in them because you don't know that's the real deal. They could drop to zero tomorrow. If China pulls the plug on, or pulls the rug out on some of these Chinese companies, they're done. It's over with. They can come yeah. in, like, you know, our government- 100% Howie. And this is what we're talking about right now with like, 
why I have a real problem with the Federal Reserve bailing out these companies, and then they turn around and then they buy our housing at 20% above, and the average guy can't compete with that. Well, now even on a bigger scale, look at the Chinese government. They're even crazier than that because the Chinese yeah. government owns everything. So you're not competing against the Chinese government. You're, co- I mean, against the Chinese company. You're competing against the Chinese government on yeah. everything. That's right. Yeah, well, yeah. and how would you feel if you knew that uh, the world's largest stable co- coin was backed by Chinese currency and the owners of Tether won't fucking admit to it? That, that well, would scare the shit out of me. I think they own a lot of a lot. I think you I, I'd love to know how much Bitcoin, Ethereum, the Chinese government owns. Um, and the fact they're starting their own fucking cryptocurrency right now. Uh, I mean, we're headed. There's no ifs, ands or buts. We're probably already in a Cold War with them. But um, as well, far the problem as is, these- dude, that our leaders are trying. I uh, don't want to win that war. I honestly believe it. You're looking at you're looking at Marxists who are bought and sold. Bought and sold. I mean, like, dude, I mean, I don't want to get too political. And I know Neff brought in some, you know, that fucking, that Mark Zuckerberg in a wig. Look at my dude. She's, dude, uh, only a man who hasn't seen vagina in a long time would think that's hot. You're like the dude who's in the military that fucks fatties just because there's no chicks on the base. That's who you are right now. You, Jen you, Saki is a gorgeous woman. Dude said nobody ever. Okay, said I have nobody. a type. I have uh, yeah. a type. Your type is, is that with dead on the inside. Up? Okay, <laughs> dead now, on see, the inside. You're going to pull out politics and not physical beauty. Physically, she is attractive to me. Listen, dude. It's yeah, like so it's like when here. people say Chris Nat. When people say Chris D'Elia or Brett Ernst are good looking guy, I'm like for comedians. Right, but they're not model good looking, dude. I mean, when we're talking good looking, brother, you want I'm me to big, pull my hair down? Is that what you're asking? I'm talking about I could pull a thousand bitches on Instagram you've never heard of that would blow that chick. I would stab just to smell their farts. Okay, <laughs> that's how hot they are. All right, do you understand right. that, Neff? Don't are bring you doing garbage poetry to- now. What? This feels like a poetry slam. What is, what is this, 8 Mile all of a sudden? Dude, I will. What am I? Fly high, stab you in your oh, brown eye. Fucking Smell pop a dog in the house, Makes everybody. Da- is that what you're talking about? Get out of Change here. Your what are, what are we in the ass. shelter all of a sudden? I will smell her farts just a fucking... <laughs> Good Lord. I don't know if I like this Sam Tripoli. Dude, oh, I definitely don't like this Chris Neff. Who, likes- who has a thing for gingers? Not dude, she's dude, she is garbage. Bro. She looks like Jody Fox. We're not talking about there's her. so many her more soul, gorgeous her women body. Out there. We're talking her, her yeah. lizard you, insides. That We're chick is like last chick on the planet hot. You know, you okay. like when you're just stuck with that. You're like, okay. ah, might as well hit this lizard person. Right. Yeah, so back to our d- deal, man. Yeah, we're we're uh we're in a it's getting serious with China. It really is. Um, and all these Chinese companies that are, they're trading in the U S uh, they're really clamping down on them. You're going to see all these stocks drop. And I have no faith in this and this, and this, you know, I mean, like, I, listen, the only reason I like Trump is because I want to do blow with his daughters. That's the only reason. Okay. That I just want to do gackers of Coke out of their bee holes. That's who I am. Okay. So but I mean, the one thing I did like is like he didn't put up with China shit. Now, I'm not saying he didn't do any business with China because you would be ridiculous, but not to do bit if you're a billionaire. But man, there's like there's a lot of stuff that he was trying to do that I thought was good for America. And I just think our leadership is just sold out and they're doing whatever they can. And it's going to and if we do go to war with them, we're going to fuck them up. I'm just telling you right now. We're going to fuck them up. They have no creativity, dude. No, They're wonderful that's, people. I love the Chinese. They steal they everything. No and that's just, creativity. That country this is has what been happens stealing for years. When you force people to do jobs that they're not built for. When you're like, oh, you do bread. You you topless dancer. You, 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 you. <laughs> oh, you hold on, hold on. The you, agree, you agree at Walmart that you like that. That's how it goes. 
The, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the, the communist China uh, definitely pre-selects their hot strippers because I was watching the Olympics and they were like, hey, man, China's uh, volleyball team, they're 6'10 because they got a lot of fucking people to choose from. So their strippers, I would imagine, are fucking smoking hot, especially if they're trained early at birth. They're probably Mongolian. The they're probably Mongolian, though. They, they probably have skills. Mongo's got even fat thought. asses, Don. Yeah. Mongo's and we're on the radar. Did you see? <laughs> did, did you see the United States uh, three-on-three women's basketball team play against Mongolia? Mongolia had a chick that was like seven foot two, three forty, but she just could not move. Man, she couldn't move. In the they U.S., took her her no, no, she's like thirteen it. years old. Is she really? She's like thirteen years old. That Mongolian chick was. Yeah, she's like seven, seven, two, seven, four. That was the biggest girl I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, I, she's she's I, like thirteen. I had to do a triple take. What's like that our Yao center, Ming's kid. That's what they. That's what they're comparing her it to. It's like Yao Ming two point but she's a woman. How is Yao Ming in the fucking Hall of Fame? First of all, that's the thing I can't get over. He's a Mongolian. Oh, you're sucking Chinese dicks. Of course you're gonna do that. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, okay, can we let's uh, let's move on. We got Robin Hood IPOing this week, and obviously, you guys know my thoughts on it. I've talked to a few insiders, and they've told me that uh, people that are holding it privately have already run for the gates to sell ahead of the IPO. I think it's looking at a thirty-five billion dollar uh, eval. Uh, you know me; I, I'll buy anything. I don't give a fuck if it's Philip Morris. I don't care if it's a dirty drug company because uh, if I can make a buck on it, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. My gut tells me this is going to be a train wreck and anybody that buys it is going to be looking at an immediate uh, loss, but uh, I could be wrong. I'd love to hear your takes. It's going to be interesting. It's a 52 million share, uh, 52 million shares outstanding. Um, it's going to price between 38 to 42 dollars a share. The, you'll know if it's good or not by this. Uh, when is it? I think it comes out Thursday, I'm guessing. Wednesday or Thursday. I can't when, recall. So here's what you do. You look at that price right up until it opens. If they move the price from 38 or 40 up to, say, 45 or 47, that's a good sign. That means it's going to pop. If that price goes down to, like, 36, 35 before the opening, that means it's going to shit the bed. Yeah, and here's my concern. Why would you invest in something that is directly to tied to payment for order flow? Because if if the U.S. government and the SEC specifically get in here and overhaul this system, and there's a chance that could occur, you're basically buying a company that's entire business model and revenue is dependent on that exact very thing. So my concern is you need to know what you're buying before you buy the brand, the title, the name. The fucking confetti it throws up on you when you fucking make a trade. Yeah. You see this? I'm saying know what you're buying. And there is a risk that the government could track down on, you know, the entire business model that that, that company's created on. So I'm not touching. Oh, I mean, no, I wouldn't. I mean, if, if I if I had a broker, you know, fire me a couple hundred shares, absolutely. That'd be great. I mean, you're you're not gonna take that much of a hit. If it drops. You might see it drop uh, 10, 15% right off the bat. Uh, you could always get out. Um, I'm trying to find out. I'd like to find out. Okay, here it is. Uh, uh, it looks like JP Morgan's taking them public, which is, that's not bad. That's a pretty big investment bank. Um, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out how much demand there is this week. Uh, you got to just look at the price on it. Personally, I think it's a piece of garbage. Um, yeah, I agree. I wouldn't buy it. Jesus, no. You know what? Uh, to paraphrase the great George Bush, uh, fool me once. I will fight you. I will <laughs> fool, fight fool you. Me once, uh, I fool, me, fight fool me once. I will fight you. Fool me twice. Hey, by the way, Sam, has there ever been an administration in the White House that you haven't disliked? Uh, yeah, his name was JFK, and okay. they put a bullet in him. Yeah. I don't know if you heard about that, dude. Well, hey, he, he did do it to himself when he said he was going to dismantle the CIA. So, I mean, it was basically suicide. Well, is that up. really doing it to yourself, Neff? Is mm -hmm. that really doing it to yourself? Yeah, especially uh, when the mob gets you elected in, uh, in Chicago. Yeah, it is doing it to yourself. 
Guys, I want to talk about real quick uh, some things going on in my week. Evan, can you click that link? As you guys know, I've been pitching you guys on uh, buying guns. Oh I want you guys to see my gun that I bought. Uh, it is what, the Caltech KSG. What did you, you bought one of those? Shotgun. Yes. So I'm going to be getting, instead of nine millimeter, I'll be getting sevens so I can load up and I can just be like, click, click, bang, bang, Dude, That's bang. a Terminator. How did you get that? It's called, I'm a law abiding citizen and I went and purchased it because I'm a young Christian warrior. Look at I that chick. Buy. Hold I buy on. for love. Hold on. Just, just, can we go back to that? Is that a, a, a shotgun? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it also it, it also shoots like uh, what you said nine millimeter meter shot. Yeah, but I'm gonna get seven so I can put more in it. Man, that's like a Rambo gun right there, man. Yeah, you, dude. You, why don't you thing. just go full? Hey, bomb. Evan, go put that into YouTube and let's watch people shoot it, and then you guys can realize I ain't fucking around anymore. Okay, I'm here to win. You're coming after my Bitcoin, China. Get some of this. Yeah, that's. I mean. Those days of school shooters buying seven or eight gums are over. They just need one of those. Yeah. Well, you know what, dude? Not everything's about more. Here, let's see if we can watch this. Let's the watch this guy shoot huh? shit. That looks like a sawed off shotgun. Boom. Look at that. Just click, click, bang. Click, click. Oh, look at that guy. Look at that degenerate, man. That guy. Oh, my that guy. God. You're a school shooter, everybody, right That's, here. He now, is. You look he more is. like a school shooter than this guy. That does. Okay. That looks like, look at Evan. Evan's out there having you, fun. You look like a day janitor shooter. Okay. You look like you're, <laughs> you're, you're working there during the day. Buddy, Dad, do you even have proper ear protection yet to shoot? Yeah. These what am I, an asshole? Yes, you are. That's why you don't have them. I guarantee <laughs> you. Don't. God, Neff's, Neff's going to shoot up the school cafeteria after he gets done cleaning it. Buddy, you know what you should oh do? God. is You should get those bean bags you, uh, you could put in them as well. And then we can do one of those jackass routines and um uh you can shoot me in the ass and we'll video it no dude i can't put little dildos in there and just have you being <laughs> <I can't>, <laughs> put those little those, those bachelorette party dildos and no, that's not what i was talking about boom, bounce that rubber boom, off of some foreheads boom, boom. so tomorrow oh Sam, sam's gonna sam's tomorrow will be a fun day for you because tomorrow around four o'clock four fifteen Tesla's earnings come out uh, after the bell and it's going to be interesting. I think the stock's going to tank. I think there's going to be, he's going to try to bullshit the negative news coming out on it. And I don't think he's going to listen. I agree with you, man. I think they've caught up with him. Yeah. And I think, I think people are realizing that this dude is full. I still, I just hate that he can manipulate the digital currency that he's not going to stop though, too. And uh, you do know that he's coming out and talking about his um, uh, Ethereum holdings right now, right? Yes, <sighs> yes. Because he'll need uh, to report them as gains. You know, uh, I believe that's for uh, what? Um, uh, the rocket ship company he owns, it's private. Sorry. It's it's SpaceX, SpaceX and it's garbage. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what I heard about Elon and uh, Ethereum. Uh, real quick, just so I can get a temperature room. How many th people think these billionaires are actually going to space? Raise your hand real quick if you well, think hold that. hold on. Let's define space. Is it 56 kilometers or is it 60? It's uh, pa out of our atmosphere. Um, I think oh, they no. just go to the top. They go to the top. I mean, yeah, they go they in the space Kraken zone. Oh. The, uh, yeah, no. there you go. He gets it. No, I don't think they've gone to space. Naf is more of a red pill than he wants you guys to admit. There I is a bunch of either. buddy. There is a bunch of trans red pills out there, so Naf is not alone. <laughs> trans red pills, you as well. Wow. Red pill. Hey, dude, <laughs> do I got to whip my dick out here just so you guys? I'm all man. <laughs> I'll buffle it out. <laughs> well, yeah, you tell me I'll, next time. I'll take a blue chew so I can have a hard on. Dude, bitch, I can't whip out before dude, that. Dude, I can't. I can't whip out my – every time I perform, it turtles up. Right now, it's not that big. Hey, I have the Three same thing with enough. my ring. My ring turtles up right before I get on stage. It's why I can't have a drop of piss in my body, and I got to have a tight ring right before I get on stage. So I know the feeling. You just pull that string. There's pull no that string. string.
Well, you, there is a rumor going around that I've got a retractable string. There's no string, guys. I think what it's is there. Toy Story. I've heard the rumors. I saw an episode of CNBC on it once. They had this. It's like chair. one of those GI Joe dolls that makes them talk. You pull the you string. You even know what channel CNBC is on, Sam? Yeah, it's on CNBC. Okay, uh, that's what channel yeah. it's on. There you go. I got the app, asshole. Hey, uh, let's address the fact that we did have a, a, a major. Uh, loss with the Suns. Um, we do we do admit our losses around here. I recommended the Suns, so I do uh, apologize to anybody that went down on the. Oh Suns. yeah, where's where's your boss, Evan? Where's my boss, oh. Suns in four, dude. Where's I'm, your I'm, boss? I'm just a producer, man. I'm just producing. I'm not. Yeah, Jesus. I don't even bet. Is he in a bunker somewhere? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was a got big fix going. And I'll apologize because I came, I sat on the show. I think the Bucks play better without the freak. The freak, oh, yeah. MVP. I mean, dude, dude I the could freak show was you a so many texts I've gotten from Howie going, the Greek freak's the most overrated player in the NBA. Yeah. And by the way, Joe Rogan's rigging MMA fights. Howie hot takes. <laughs> Howie's hot takes. Let's get that trending. Hashtag I'm starting to get some solid. Things. I'm going to start. I'm going to be starting conspiracy theories with my uh, cousin's recommendations all the time now, man. We're just to be firing out theories. It's all about <laughs> Dr. Um, Dewey's got a new theory this week. Um, should we talk about the Delta variant? Because I am concerned it is uh, being uh, sold in uh, the mainstream media, of course, to scare the fuck out of people. Um, oh. And I want to talk about its relationship to the market. Howie and I have uh, uh, diverging views on where we think this market's coming. Howie thinks we're, and correct me if I'm wrong, Howie, looking at somewhere between a 10 to 20% correction before the end of the year. Uh, yeah, 20%, 20%. And I am, I am on the other side of this thing. I don't think we are going to see the end of this bull run until uh, next spring or um, maybe next summer. I don't think I, I'm going with my gut here, um, but I don't think we're going to see a retraction that big. Um, we might see something under 10% in the five to 8% range, but I don't see anything, anything that here, big here's what I want to say about that. And this is from the outside of a guy who does zero research. And I just read it. Thank you for admitting that. Finally. Okay. <laughs> Uh, do you want to yell out respect me at the same time as long as respect you me okay so neff if i believe that whether people want to admit it or not the <laughs> stock world and the cryptocurrency world are way more connected than people think there's yep. a lot of overlap so mm -hmm. if you think there's going to be a tank in crypto I guarantee you it's going to bleed into the stock market and people are going to get freaked out and start pulling their money out. I so, see it the other way. When Tether tanks and is exposed as a massive fraud, and I could be totally wrong. They might just be idiots. That don't no, I've been hearing that fraud. forever. Yeah, and it's definitely if it, if it were to possible. Occur, if it were to occur, I think there are so many people that bought the top uh, in April and, and in May, especially Bitcoin when it was trading at whatever, 64 or whatever. Oh. And I don't think they have money to buy. And I, and I think if they take another hit, they're going to throw their hands in the air and say, fuck this. I'm putting my money in mutual funds and I'm not even looking at it. I had fun trading, but I don't have time for this shit. So I think if you see another big crypto crash, I think that money goes into the market. Now, it can't have that big of an impact because it's only 125th of the value of uh, the stock market, but it would have a, a minor impact. That's my gut. Dude, Bitcoin's up above 38, man, up almost 12.5% today. I mean, that's, that's a serious buy. And I guarantee you it'll be back to 32 by Tuesday. If okay, happens. let's get this. What are we putting on? Let's get some I don't numbers. think so. I, th I think it breaks get through 40. Uh, okay, well, let's make this interesting then. What is it uh, at right now? 38.3. Okay, so do how much time do you want to give me to get to You said 30? Tuesday. Okay, I'll say it's at 32 uh, by Tuesday for 100 right. bucks. Okay, I will take that bet. Take, I, I got you. That I want I'll that action. It. Yep. Okay, E, you want to make some money off me? He's beating up. <laughs> you're, you're fucked. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know if you notice how, how how volatile it's been lately. Yeah, I don't oh, know. Oh, you're right. It has been. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. I, I've been talking some crypto co cowboys they think by the end of the year, and this will be the final run for a while, they could get up to 60, 70. 
Bitcoin doesn't finish above 50 this year. Book it. If you want to make that bet, I'll make that bet as well. Okay. Give me a hundo. I'm, on a, I'm, I'm on. I'm, a, I'm All in. All right. Give me a hundo Hundo's around. That, right? Write yeah. that down, dude. You write write that, that down. Let us know. Let us know Ev, are you in or are you out, bro? I'm Take in, some brother. of that I'm fucking in, brother. no mercy that, money bro. and throw it in on this shit. He Take pays that, me a dude. dollar. He pays me one dollar. <laughs> okay. It's not even for, I don't even do no mercy. <laughs> By the end of the year, Bitcoin does not touch. That'll be my pay. last joke about that, Evan. I don't mm -hmm. want to make you uncomfortable. You can, you know, it. I don't want you going to human resources, which is yeah. uh, who's our uh, HR department. <laughs> hey, real quick. Uh, because uh, I know we have so many GameStop uh, and AMC people in the Discord. Uh, I officially exited my position on GameStop for a loss of 8%. I bought it again to swing it. I bought, uh, I, I bought it and I waited for it to bounce back up to get back in. What I want to reiterate to people, um, because I respect so many of our, our readers and uh, uh, people that aren't even in the reader community that hold AMC and GameStop, but I think it's important to remember that this retail money came in after GameStop. They've never been in the stock market before. And I think it's important to remember that once you make a gain, you have to be able to have an exit strategy to take, uh, to, to take the gain. And I think what the problem is, is so many people are new into uh, investing that they don't see that these squeezes have already squeezed. And uh, oh, what? This, can you say that again? The squeezes have already squoze. It's like doing kegels. So basically what I'm... Is squoze a word? It no, is. It's not. It is a word. It's not a word. Can you look that up? I'll take 10 bucks on that. It's not a word. Yeah, uh, urban dictionary. A word. Does the urban dictionary count? No. Um, it's a word. No, if you it, want to take it, it, Merriam-Webster. Merriam uh, it's, it's in the dictionary. Okay, look it up. We'll let, put it on screen. I want to see it. All right. Uh, just, conspiracy just going hey, Evan, just hail to your emperor right now can you okay, please I will not to your emperor? okay squoze definition of squoze is dialect pass okay all right all right so, i owe you ten dollars i i didn't take the bet don't worry about it no i'll give okay. you ten bro oh I this don't is need america so what i'm saying is it's important to recognize if you held gamestop at five dollars and saw it go up to 350 you 95 x on your play that is a massive fucking return okay that's when you yeah. take profits the same thing with amc if you bought it at 15 and you turned it into 60 you 4x on it those are big profits people no one did no one did and that's my point there's another play right down the road but if you think GameStop's going to a thousand or if you think amc is going to a hundred i'm going to tell you right now you're going to be waiting a long fucking time and that's fine if you want to do that but it's not a great idea in my opinion to lock up your money to wait for that to happen it's like now, this week when OCGN goes to 12 or 13, we will be out. We will be out. We will be happy. The will you that, let me know that so I can Oh, I will. Up. I will. The fact that thing closed above seven, uh, it looks solid, man. It looks like this thing's going to bounce up to nine, 10, 11, 12. And man, I will get out because eventually it's going to two. <laughs> well, here's the thing. If Delta keeps doing its Delta-like thing, um, that hey OCG Chris, can I ask you a question? Can I ask yeah. you a question? Yeah. Um, how do they test for the Delta? I, I honestly don't know. I mean, how do they test that it's not Corona, but it's a Delta variant? Oh, how how do they oh, test? I, I honestly don't know, but I would yeah. assume. I would assume I can, I, I can that tell when you. they take the the test, I can they tell can different, you. differentiate between SARS CoV two and oh. whatever they've assigned. So the they're Delta using the same test. Okay, gotcha. No, no, hey, gotcha. I'm just just thinking aloud here. I'm not being a dick. You know what happens so. when you think out loud? You Guys, make an ass they, out of they, you and they, me. They, it's by the protein strands. That's what they do. Thank they, you, they, Howie. It's by Thank the protein you. strands. Because okay. I had two uh, tests. I had two different just, types. Uh, 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 We're all biologists now? Uh, uh, apparently, talk to the uh, hand says yeah. there's no protein to. Uh, no, yeah. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you guys. The, the PRC test was never meant to do what they're telling you to do. But that's a whole different podcast. Go back to your guys' fun fairy tales. Go on. Well, what I'm saying is, is that if Delta does keep expanding, some, there is going to be a market for a lower price drug, which Covaxin is, uh, which is basically OCGN. 
So whether that's in India, whether it's in Canada, uh, there will be a market for uh, third world countries. And I don't want to call Canada a third world country because you're not. And I love you. And it's the only place I'm somewhat famous in. Uh, there will be a market for people to buy. How much family do you have in Canada? Family or friends? Or fans. Family. You said you're famous there. How many family members do you have? Uh, I see what you did there. You see what uh, I did, dude? Yeah, I did. Good one. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> I know if I get the Howie this, that I hit. <laughs> oh, the, the Howie um, snapped my Copenhagen hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kodiak. Kodiak, whatever. <laughs> the point is, I I, I think Covaxin is, or uh, OCGN is worthy of a gamble at this price just because of the, the Delta variation, whether it's yeah. imagined or real or not. Um, if, if this thing, if there are people that need cheap vaccines, they're going to, they're going to put themselves in the forefront. So I like it as a gamble, whether you're buying shares, if you're going to look at calls, I wouldn't look at anything past October. And I think $10 is the play on that. I am holding 1250s. I'm down on both of them, but we've seen this thing shoot through the roof twice as how he's mentioned before. Yeah. It's and, technically, you look at the chart, it looks like it's going to do it. And uh, we got a question even today from Gregory T. Uh, can I invest in any of the vaccines? We've been talking about this for literally since the start of the podcast. So yeah, OCGN. I mean, OCGN, if you want the gamble, if you want the, the most risk, most reward, it's definitely OCGN. It's Moderna, risk, yeah. yeah. Moderna was up last week. Um, I'm surprised we didn't see J&J fall as much, especially now they're, they're saying their one-shot dose isn't as effective. Um well, they have a billion drugs. I mean, the one that's breaking out, the stock that's breaking out right now. Pfizer. It's hell of a bunch, Pfizer, yeah. yeah absolutely. Pfizer's breaking out. And, and Pfizer's too smart. They're going to get that booster shot out there, which means more money to them. They'll squeeze somebody at the uh, CDC. They'll see, squeeze somebody in Congress to make this, this you know, a reality. Uh, whether or not you take it or not, that's up to you. But I, I won't be shocked if that's happening in the next four or five months. Um, what about the rest of the reader questions, E? Why don't we get to them? All right. Uh, people asking about our own Bitcoin node. Uh, we got something in the works for that. Don't worry. We're working on it. Yeah, yeah, we got and shout out to the mod team for all their hard work that they've done with their their uh, internal proposals with us. And we are uh, in the process of re reviewing them. So we're going to get back to you uh, specifically Valley the God. Great presentation. Um, Dave, Sarah, thanks for showing up to one meeting, not drunk. Uh, Grizzly Whisker. <laughs> Whoa, uh, yeah. dude, rude. Tommy Dunn. <laughs> um, rude. Zoltan. Zoltan, of course, okay. and um, also uh, the three people that we worked with outside of the group, uh, Ryan Dunn with Not Safe Moon, uh, Forex Trader, and then um, somebody else I'm forgetting, but that's just because my brain's been so fried. But let's keep going e, with those questions. All right. What calls would you buy for DraftKings right now? Uh, the calls? Yeah, I got DraftKings, dog. Uh, See, that was a great buy. I mean, thank you. We got it. I got it at like 47, 48. It's up to 49 right now. Um, yeah, I'm at, I think I bought it at 48. Um, he's saying, what calls should he buy? Yes, yeah, right, I would look right at, now. yeah, you I look got at 48. It's up to 49. Look at, look at the November or December 50s or 55s. That's yeah, I wouldn't get too at. aggressive uh, when, it, when, when you're talking about out, out Hold of the on, money dude. calls. You wouldn't be aggressive be -E aggressive i would not thank you will ferrell and sherry oterry um, by the way she she's on twitter man i can't believe she's not bigger you know what i saw her do jeff uh jeff richards's pod uh, recently and she was so cool so she's uh she's the best shout out sherry amazing. oterry you know what i'll tell you share you a quick sherry oterry story I had one of those shitty cater waitering jobs that you stumble on every once in a while when you first get to Hollywood. And it was my, my first week in Hollywood. And it was at uh, the musician's assistance program that Eric Clapton was doing and he sold off all of his guitars. And I got there and all of a sudden I, I see Robert De Niro talking to Marty Scorsese. And then I go out and have a cigarette and Tom Sizemore comes up to me and he goes, man, I really miss Kurt, you know what I mean? And I'm like, Cobain? And he goes, yeah, man. I really miss that guy. And I was like, this party's too cool for me to work at. So I took off my tux. I threw it in the trash can. I went up to the front row. I was drinking Vuv Coco with Sherry O'Terry. 
Jimmy Ray Vaughn is on stage five feet away from me with Clapton. And I was like, if I get fired from this job. Did you say Jimmy Ray Vaughn? Or you mean Stevie yeah. Ray Vaughn? No, Stevie Ray's been dead way before that. His brother, Jimmy oh. Ray. Uh, and I go, if I get fired, this is. Was he play keyboards? <laughs> Are you guys, do you guys have any musical inclination whatsoever outside of whatever's in the top four? Yeah, I listen to black to people rock. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Don't you call me on my cell phone. You think that's music is the problem. I don't think that's, that's music, that's Drake. bro. Okay, Drake, yeah, he, he's, he's Canadian, so he's not really black. The point is, I was like, I'm going to get fired. It's totally worth it. And all of a sudden, I, I grab a bottle of champagne, and I'm drinking with Sherry O'Terry. And then I walked out of there, and all these guys are like, you're so fucked. And then they sent me a paycheck, <laughs> and I cashed it. And I was like, thanks, guys. And then I kept working for them for like two more years. But you get those opportunities in life, and when you do, you got to make the most of them. So a side story. Go ahead. Uh, uh, go ahead. All right. How long is crypto going to be insanely boring? Insanely boring? Yeah. Well, so, obviously not not this week because we've got a bet that it's going to be back uh, down to 32K by Tuesday. And I'm saying it's not going to go up uh, Bitcoin to 50 by the end of the year. So, hey, if, if it's boring out there, you're not listening to this show. You can sweat our action. Yeah. Solid, All right? I think it's great. I, I do think we're, the market is figuring itself out. I do think it's being manipulated by the powerful. I you know, when we played that, I, I want to say this earlier, you know, it's like, it's very interesting when we pick and choose what we'll listen to from the mainstream media. So for me, most anything on there, I think, what is the angle that they're trying to play? Yeah, you know, like why, why, what is it? What are they playing? Why are they telling us this? And there's always something. And I think... And I do believe that Tether is shady as shit. But I think it'd also be, these people want you out of the crypto market, in my humble opinion. They don't want you mind, to. Can keep in mind, consider the source. I know I showed you a CNBC article, but I did some deep digging from bloggers who I trust. Um, who are who they? Are, Catfuck47? Yeah. It's torch. It's retarded blow towards 68. And by the way, I got, a DM from him. I got a DM from him and he wasn't very happy. He was like, you know what? I do a lot of hard work dropping you dope memes and you guys constantly fuck up my name. So a little respect is in order from us. It's retarded blowtorch 68 and cat queefs 27. <laughs> I Those think you me. fucked that up. I think you Shut fucked up. it up. So. Oh, yeah. retarded blowtorch. No, I, I thought you said, I thought you said you are right, spider. Jesus Christ. All right, and that was Cash Daddies, everybody. So, um, <laughs> we had a, we had a... uh, listen, so I, I take everything with a grain of salt when it comes, when you have a smoke show just out of college interviewing Ooh, some e -E? people. Yeah, I mean, besides E, right? I mean, I would actually like, I, I'm starting to rethink E as winning the belt at this thing. I'm starting to think it's Howie. I really am. I mean, Howie just threatened a room full of 25 year old. I did. Blue belt I was, I was, guys. About, I was so, about to just beat some ass last night. So I'm nothing against that young lady. God bless her. She's, she's earned her right to have that job. She's really easy on the eyes, but you know, I really got a question. Like what is the purpose of that interview? Why would that guy go on that show? If he knew people are talking about that stuff, that's just could, my whole thing. Well, the, the reason is this, there, there are people out there that want to know if Tether is backed dollar for dollar like they claim to be. And the CEO is nowhere to be found. The CFO is nowhere to be found. So they trot out the chief technology officer and a lawyer, which already tells me this is fucking sketchy because nobody wants to show up. So I think it was, it's a negative reflection on Tether for skirting the issue and not putting up the real people. And in the interview, those two dipshits just complain, our guys are so busy, they just don't have time to answer the questions. If you're a $60 billion company and your CEO can't come out and answer questions, there's a fucking problem. So you can get behind what is the motivation here all you want. Um, I look at the truth and, I'll, and, and I highly recommend watching all 30 minutes of that interview. It was super shady. It was dodgy. And if I was a holder and tether, I'd say this concerns the fuck out of me. 
that's the point of me bringing it up to share to our readers and you guys can watch it and do whatever you want with it. But my concern is you need to understand stable coins are a part of the, the, the ecosystem that is crypto because there are, are places you go and transfer your money before you go buy crypto. And a lot of people park their money in stable coins. For instance, when E was smashing and grabbing the fuck out of all those coins, he parked them in stable coins instead of taking them and putting them in the Miss Bank account. And, wh and what happened, E? I didn't put them in the stable coins. I put them oh, in the I BNB. But I oh, should have I should have put oh, them in the stable I thought, coins. Right. I thought you Gross. had them in B BUSD at the time. So Gross. the point is, you need to be aware of what things are within the world. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, do you see Theta going back to its all-time high sooner rather than later? Uh, no. Over 100% gain with the way Bitcoin is right now? Not, not soon. No. Um, physical gold and silver mining stocks. Inflation around the corner or deflationary bubble burst? Thank you. Bubble or burst? Uh, I mean, there's no bubble, so you got to have a bubble in order to burst. I mean, gold, mining stocks... Uh, I mean, I'll look at AUW, um, what's the fuck, or AU, you just look at that one, AU's trading at 19, it's actually at a one-year low. Um, if you're going to buy gold, look at it, now's where you want to buy it, because holy shit, look at, look at AU, look at uh, Anglo Gold, which is a, a solid gold stock, uh, trading at 19, its high was 38. Um, I would own five to 10% silver or gold in my portfolio right now. Absolutely. Uh, or, or any other precious metal like copper for that matter. Um, one thing I want to bring up real quick, because it is something that is definitely affecting, um, the world right now. How and I were talking about this earlier today. I went to book a, a car for four days in Seattle and the price was $200 a day. That was, yeah, for the shit dude. Wagon. that was for the yeah. shit wagon. Okay. No rental cars. So there is a massive shortage of used vehicles. And if you are in a position to get rid of a used vehicle, um, you can make good money right now. Really? So, oh, there, absolutely. Used, used cars right now are trading or are, are selling at about a 30 to 40% premium to where they Why? were last they year. they want those converters? Do you know there's don't no have inventory? And new, new cars aren't being made because there's no chips. No chips which means used cars are huge in demand, huge demand for used cars right now. And they're through the roof. Yeah. And my uh, point is, if you do have an extra car and you've been thinking about selling it and it's used, the time is now. There are dealerships calling people that they sold 2019s and 2020s to, asking them to sell them back to them. How about if I got leased cars? Buddy, we've already been over this. If you're gonna lease cars, you're throwing your money away, but you already did that, so it's gone. I'm never gonna buy a car. Unless it's an old classic. Being a man isn't for everybody. Um, let's move on <laughs> to the next question. What will be Gross. the bottom? What will be the bottom for coin? Uh, didn't Howie do you predict a bottom? Yes, he um, did. Uh, e, you wrote that bet down uh, between us. I have till the end of the year. Oh, you didn't do your job. Well, don't worry. I have about no it. idea where it is. We have a cutoff of 170. Isn't that correct? Or was it 180, Howie? It was 180. Okay, so it's uh, yeah, it's 180 with you, and then I have 170 with Cash Daddy's 444, um, who I actually blocked on the Twitter for other reasons. So just so you know, Cash Daddy's 444. If I do uh, lose, um, I will DM you and unblock you and pay you your fucking money. But yeah, had, to, had to be done, bro. Had to be done. I think, I think it'll go to 180. Uh, yeah, it was it was uh, 180 with Howie and 170 with Cash Daddy's 444. All right. Last one. What do you think about MMAT? MMAT? I don't know anything about it. Meta Materials. It's a penny stock. Um, business Development Optomics. I mean, it's a penny stock. Uh, stock's been around since April. Uh, actually, no. Stock's been around since last July. It's a year old. Highly, highly risky. Um, just what's average volume, uh, 12, 13 million, 22 million a day. I, I wouldn't mess with it. I'm looking at it. I, I mean, could go up, but I don't know anything about it. It hasn't been around that long. 
looks highly risky. Real quick before we get into our picks, I want to bring this up. Um, a lot of people uh, that are retail, small-time guys like me that don't have Bluebird terminals, their go-to is Yahoo Finance. And I typically, I mention this to, to many people, I usually check the, the, the highest volume traded you know, stocks on a day, day gainers, day losers. And they recently added a new column in there called highest shorted stocks. So this tells me that they know they want uh, readers on their page or eyes on their page rather. And they know people are actively searching out shorted stocks. So I found that interesting, but it is a nice tool if you're thinking about buying anything that's heavily shorted. Um, just go to screeners on Yahoo Finance and it'll pull up uh, right underneath it. So you guys want to get into picks? Yeah, yes. man, I'm really excited about picks uh, this week because I honestly have the strongest pick that I think I possibly could have ever had. I'm very excited. Let's All right, let's hear go it. For it. Oh, oh, you want me to go first? Okay. Um, look, my pick of the week uh, – and I'm telling everybody, buy this stock, put it in your IRA, uh, hold on to it because it is trading at $31 right now. Uh, I think it can go to 50. The stock's JWN. It's a retail stock, uh, Nordstrom's. Uh, and, why? What happened? Did Lane Bryan go out of business and you had to settle oh, for this? Oh, snaps. Listen, man. I'm, I'm telling the readers right now, if you've ever listened to, you know, I mean, I tossed out IBM a few weeks ago. They came out with earnings last, last week and blew them away. I love that stock. Last week, uh, or the last time I talked to uh, Lily, Lee, it bought Airbnb back at 130. It's at 138. Listen, what, man. Can we see the chart, Howie? On, on JWN? I'd love to see the chart. Oh, God, take a look at it. What it's, is it going to uh, make me come? It's, it's, just beautiful. Uh, I think with everything they have going on right now, um, in between the lines. Just go to the year if you don't mind. Where it's trading. Look at the year. Um, I just, I think this is the best entry point you're going to see. Uh, What's the high? What's the 52 week high? -y? What is that? Wow, 45? It's got a lot of support where it's at right now. That's for yeah, and I just I love it. the the forty The fifty two week high is forty six. You love it so much. Why don't you marry it? I'm about. You know, I already it. haven't. Oh, about oh man! Between That's the shoes, crazy. between the shoes and the handbags in there. I mean, it's just uh, I'll be living there. Um, didn't but, uh, didn't Trump uh, rape that girl, E. Jean Carroll, in a Nordstrom's? It might have been in one of those dressing rooms. The dressing rooms are big enough where it's possible. So. The fuck uh, is wrong with you? That could have happened, but what Just I'm for you, buddy. Listen, buddy, man. if she comes up and she's got another cum soaked dress and she's actually oh. got some DNA, I mean, did you, do you? I, I, is your goal get to get people never to listen to the show? Is that your goal? To get people <sighs> to never listen to the show? Because if that's your goal, you're killing it right now. Congratulations on living your dreams. Okay. Um, AWN guy. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank Lord. you. What is a stable coin? Um, <laughs> um, a Bitcoin? Um, um, Ethereum? Uh, what am I? How about knowledge is power keeping some of our listeners uh, listening to the show so they don't think we're all complete fucking idiots? Oh, uh, that's too late, dude. We're almost, how many episodes in? We? 50. It's a bad uh, Howie, Howie, are you buying shares of Nordstrom's? Or? Oh, abs 1,000%. Um, okay. Sam, buy it, put it in your IRA. I'm it's, going to, and I'm going to buy a, it, and I'm going to put it in my IRA. Solid, solid, solid advice I'm giving you right now on this one. Okay. Love. Anything else, Howie? No, I'm just going with JWN, still holding their Airbnb. It's up eight points. Um, love IBM still. I mean, they crush their earnings. Uh, it's going to 150, 155, probably over the next couple months. Um, but no, Nordstrom's man, buy that thing. Okay. Um, before we get into uh, the doomsday prepper and his recommendation, um, Evan, do you have anything? Yeah. So I'm going to go with Amazon this week. Okay. Okay. So Amazon just hired a guy and a team to spearhead their crypto strategy. So they're going to get into crypto, start accepting Bitcoin as a form of payment. And they're also going to try to launch their own crypto by 2022. 
This was just announced this week. I think it's pretty promising knowing, you know, the brand that Amazon is. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go for the stock. Great stock. Okay. Um, yeah, you can't beat it. Um, I, I regret every time I've sold it. I should have just held it long term. Yeah, um, looks like it's going higher. And don't forget, guys, you if you go in there and it's what is that at thirty six hundred dollars right now, um, you're going to need to buy fractional chairs. Um, I don't know who's doing that besides Schwab and uh, IPO that we don't mention. But um, don't forget, if that is one of your goals, get on a broker where you can buy fractional shares so you don't have to spend whatever thirty six hundred dollars a share on it. Why? Why wouldn't you want to spend $3,600 a share on it? Maybe a lot of people don't have $3,600 to, to buy a single share of Amazon. Oh, Not well, everybody's a baller around here besides me. I got okay. you. Go ahead, um, David Koresh. What do you got for us? Uh, I mean, besides the uh, Caltech, the which I suggest everybody look into that gun again. I just bought a bubble gum for my daughters. Kids love bubble guns. <laughs> uh it just makes bubbles for them and they're really happy uh i am looking into property right now again uh where do you want to live i think you gotta live near 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 um water resources yeah i'm looking at tennessee as a possible place to buy some land chattanooga everybody wants met um nashville nashville i'm thinking chattanooga a lot of fresh water near there I'm not moving Neff, so you don't have to snitch on me to uh, everybody else. I never else. snitched on you anybody. completely snitched on me, All Neff. right, roll the you tape back. Snitch. You told everybody that you're talking about Tennessee, anybody. and I mentioned okay. it to one person, and you think it's a big secret. If I want, it's not big secret. You tell her that I'm moving. I haven't said I'm moving. I, I said I'm looking to invest in property. I said, talk this ding dong out of moving to one of the reddest hillbilly states in the country. No Dude. disrespect, volunteers. Okay. Yes, I love hillbilly rednecks. I may have, I'm, I may be in Nashville, Sam. Are you going to move? It's a, we'll see. It's a, hey, you guys have I fun. can't believe Get you're still in. I can't what, believe. What are you guys gonna do? Up. Go start up the nitty gritty dirt band in fucking Tennessee? I don't want to move. Maybe. But if my girl gets this job, which Tennessee's where she's gotta go. Nashville. Dude, dude, you get guns. My kid isn't gonna learn critical race theory. I'm super excited, dude. But right now, I'm I'm looking at a you know a couple investments, man. I am thinking about buying a bowling alley. I'm just putting that out to you guys. Yeah. That's, a, that's uh, upstate New York by the rusty cut splitter, isn't it? Uh, uh, dude, no. <laughs> it's shaking his head. Actually, like, actually, actually, it's the rusty nail, not the rusty <laughs> cut splitter. Whatever. I thought that's where all women like to go get <laughs> back room okay, on the can pinball we, can machine. Can we just stop, Neff, with these jokes? Nobody wants to hear them, okay? This is my time to give my picks, okay? Okay, so uh, who makes that bubble gum? Is that a Hasbro or is that a Mattel Okay, product? great question, great question, dude. Uh, let me find that real quick. Uh, oh yeah, okay. So this is, I'm, I'm showing you real quick. It is the 44 wheel bubble machine, okay? It's a 44 hole rocket launcher shaped bubble maker dude and i just bought two of them because my daughters love oh my them. god look at this fucking thing no, this thing is a like monster super soaker <laughs> yeah i oh, just sweet. bought two of them for my daughters Where do they, shoot? Ho- they shoot they shoot bubbles yeah 44 holes must be wow. nice yeah sounds like the last porn i just jacked off to okay i'm talking about my daughters you scumbag well, I'm talking about Jesus. being uh, single and alone, living with two cats. Yeah, Deal maybe because you bring up 44 holes when people are talking about their kids. Uh, maybe that's why you're alone. Okay. <laughs> uh, isn't it great to be back? <laughs> isn't it Guys, great to be back? Listen, I'm going to go real quick. There's something I want to do before we go. I wanted to do readers' rates and reviews. Guys, we got a lot of five stars out there. Uh, I, I'm going to read the last couple because I can't remember the last one we read. So here we go. Five stars. Good stuff. Love the show, but enough, 
but enough I w- with okay he totally messes up love the show but enough with the cats seriously fuck that no. guy I can't believe I've made money from paying attention to these idiots word up to Neff's mom come on bro love that guy but fuck that guy come on great podcast this podcast is great because of the variety of economic topics are presented in an interesting digestible manner the fellas he's talking about us and maybe Neff too, share their passion for Hold on. stacking fatties with real world. It, who's he talking life. about? <laughs> who's he talking about? <laughs> <sighs> this one's a great one. This one's a great. You're gonna love this, Neff. If this is for readers only, five stars. If Trading Places was a financial advice podcast this is your show howie and catman's comedy is on par with that of dan Aykroyd and eddie murphy triple is okay okay <laughs> but if you want to bank baddies get out your reader's glass and listen to these guys you can use more financials as opposed to ridiculous insanities by listening either way great show well you hated this show um yeah, you didn't here like we it. go uh help has helped my reading level and then yeet, yeet, skeet, skeet, five stars. <laughs> so, Christ. I mean. I like that one. We are crushing it. Hey, the one thing I want to say real quick to the readers. Hey, listen, continue to DM me with questions. I've gotten so many questions over the past two weeks. I've looked over your portfolios. I've gone over your different mutual funds and your 401ks, your IRAs. I talked to tons of people about what Morningstar is and how to rate your funds uh great conversations it seems like a lot of people are getting educated definitely let's keep it going keep it going with the questions i'll answer anything all right enough speak for the last 15 minutes um well i've already told you my pick is jen sock what do you mean and last what? 15 minutes we're we're wrapping it up we crushed that Neff has his pick i haven't oh, made my I pick you did your pick no, so is I that didn't. what you do on that other podcast evan you just uh try to make them wrap it up quickly talking about i said the last 15 minutes um i have two picks that i really like this week um the first is a company um that um someone we've spoken about here uh, very much and we admire is the founder and ceo of it's michael novogratz's company called galaxy digital and um i think this is one of the sharpest guys in the business when it comes to um crypto And my feeling is I really enjoy trading stocks. What I hate about crypto more than anything is that it trades 24 hours a day and I'm never allowed to reset. Um, I am holding uh, Bitcoin, I hold Ethereum, I hold Matic and I hold two shit coins, which I am so deep underwater on. And I will say this, don't ever buy a fucking shit coin because most of these things aren't going to exist. Oh my God. Can we please do this with Neff from three months ago? Absolutely. Going, dude, you got to get in the cum rocket. And then you got to lay a little bit of that on jizz tits. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, something that you've never been able to master. It's called humility. And I am perfectly capable of saying I made a mistake. Um, and the point is, it is not worth my time to trade something that volatile and that speculative. So I will keep my Bitcoin. I will keep my Ethereum. I will keep my Matic. Uh, these are projects that I, I believe in. But what I want to do is turn over the reins to somebody like Galaxy Digital, because I think they can do it better than I can. So I like Galaxy Digital. I'm planning on buying it um, this week. I'm going, it's going to be a long-term hold for me. Um, but this goes to buying the product and the people behind it. And I don't think there's anybody that's more connected to Wall Street and crypto uh, than Mike Novogratz. So I'm going to be uh, entering a fairly large position and I have no plans to swing it. It'll be parked and um, it'll be a again? Corner- Galaxy Digital. Um, yeah. The ticker is, let me pull it up for you guys. BRPHF. It's currently traded on uh, the OTC market, um, but it, it won't be long until that's uh, either a NYSE or a NASDAQ listing. And then the second uh, pick is a more speculative play. Um, you guys know that I love psilocybin. 
Uh, I love mind med. Uh, I think psychedelics are where pot, uh, pot stocks were five years ago. And um, I'm going to get a little speculative with a company called Field Trip Health. Um, they're an OTC uh, uh, listing as well, um, but they are directly connected to the psilocybin play as well. And this is more of a, uh, of a, a gamble, just that they're going to get uplisted this week to the NASDAQ. And I think it's good for a 5% pop just on that alone, uh, because I don't think enough people know about it. So if I get in and manage to get out with a 10, 15% gain within the week, I'll already be gone. But that is my swing of the week, as it were. Um, want to shout out um, to Kalemi Fire, um, amazing human being that came out and watched me bomb last week. I really enjoyed our conversation. Uh, so thanks for coming out and supporting. And again, to all the amazing readers um, who uh, did send me uh, notes about uh, Millie, uh, it was an unfortunate um, time for me and uh, know that every single one of those uh, texts and messages were read. And I apologize if I hadn't had time to uh, respond to them. Um, so that's it for me. Um, you guys uh, have anything else you want to uh, drop? Guys, see, come see me live. I'm going to be, I know, uh, I know our good friend Evan does uh, the opening stuff, but you know, come see me in Dallas. Come see me in OKC. Holla at your boy. All right. All right. Cut up, man. So good.